Hello and welcome back and that is right we're continuing our look at the XPG Gamix SSD. This is uh, the non low profile heatsink version you're thinking of the blade there don't worry we will be looking at that one. This is the one that uses the high quality but quite chunky proprietary heatsink that occupies the um, the full height and a little bit more of the PlayStation 5 M2 SSD base. You can't use the cover. So in today's video, we are going to be looking at four games. We've already transferred all the games over and we are looking at the following. We're looking at Spider-Man Remastered. Uh, that is the PS5 uh, scaled up version of that game. We're looking at Ghosts of Cinema. There you go, I pronounced it wrong again. We're looking at Rocket League and finally, The Last of Us 2. And as you can see, We've got the M2 SSD in there. There are all of our games. We've got four games from the previous test already on there. And there you go. That is the S70 that we're testing today. So without further ado, let's not waste any time. Let's go straight into this. I do recommend um, if you are interested in buying this SSD that you definitely, definitely, definitely watch the previous parts in this series on this particular SSD because I refer to a lot of stuff about the specifications. I refer to a lot of the background of this SSD. Um, IOPS, we do some heavy read, heavy write activity and it includes the PS5 benchmark. So although this is focusing specifically on these four games for certain reasons that I'll go through all the way through the video, I strongly recommend that you check out at least part one and two in this series where we go into a lot more detail about the SSD itself. But for now, let's start the comparison against the internal PS5 SSD in three, two, one. This should be lovely and quick and there we are we are in the world of the game remarkably quickly and again yes this was a game that came out for the ps4 but it's been scaled up with everything from the ray tracing to the uh, improved frame rate to the improved textures resolution and more all of that brought into this game uh, that was already utilized within the miles morales game now well the reason we include this game of course notwithstanding that it is a ps5 um, early doors title but also because it does a great job of having huge amounts of assets and speed and it gives us a good way to bench test if this SSD is uh, providing information to the CPU, GPU and memory as quickly as it needs. Do bear in mind while we're doing this as well that um, this test is being conducted with a capture card here on the Gamix here on the top right of the screen. Top left where you see the internal SSD footage from the P. The PS5 was recorded using the console's own internal capture. The reason we don't include it um, for the SSDs when we're doing the voiceover and stuff is because the PlayStation's own internal capture cuts out lots of stuff in between where it's deeming it not game content. That's transitioning to XMB menus and more, and it just creates a worse free flow product there. But for now, let's go through. Um, we've looked at it. I'll be honest, this is running fine. All the fast travel that we're doing here is going great. But neatly, let's go on to actual fast travel. Let's move to the very northernmost point of this map. And from here, we're going to fast travel uh, into another area of the map. And from there, we're just going to go straight in and see how quickly it loads up the new area in three, two, one. So again, the fast travel has been initiated. It should be lovely and quick. And indeed, it is. Bear in mind, of course, that a lot of the assets in this game are going to be very similar throughout the game be they trees cars uh, block elements of buildings so even though there's fast travel a lot of the existing elements utilized already are going to be reused but still nonetheless we do immediately create fast travel to go into this area look at that beautiful ray tracing of that light through the trees there um, but still nonetheless it's running absolutely fine cannot fault it whatsoever so how about for now we make our way on to our next game which is ghosts of cinema so in order to bench test this game, we're going to be going into the Legends mode and we're going to be bench testing two preset areas of the game. So the first one we're looking at is the Story mode, Severed Hearts. We're turning matchmaking off, no online connectivity to provide any kind of problematic stuff in between. And we're going to kick in straight the game right now in 3, 2, 1. You're going to count us in on the bottom right there. So again, we're going to see how these two compare all the way through. And we are looking at how the game's going to deal with textures, distancing. And I know the opening here looks like it's a pre-made FMV, but in the numerous instances we've seen during this opening uh, scene here, the lots of assets change a lot of the time. This is all pre-game rendered footage, and sometimes people or items uh, are not in the same place. 
So this is still loading even during the you know the opening segment there. That is still partial loading and assets being introduced. So for now, what we're going to do is make our way into the game, and then from there, all we're looking to do here is just see how well we can uh, push this game in order to get it to uh, see if we can cease it doing the job the way we want it to do. So again. So let's go through then. We're just going to quickly run through the environment. Again, we are kind of limited in our scope for how far we can go, but still nonetheless, we can still keep moving forward uh, just to push the game a little bit there. And again, we're looking at keeping the frame rate. We're looking at those textures we run into things. And again, a lot of those textures will be the ground textures as well uh, to keep an eye on all the way through. But for now, let's carry on going through here. Still seemingly running fine. Again, what we'll do, rather than muck around too much there, what we'll do is make our way through the area, introduce a little bit more activity there. But for now, it's running absolutely fine. See no problems whatsoever. But again, we'll let the character die as we move on to the next test. This next test is going to be uh, a little bit similar, but with a slight twist. Um, it's one that we've tested already, so we're going to go back into the return to lobby. And in this one, it's one of the survival modes built into the game, where in this survival mode, uh, in Shores of Vengeance, once again, uh, matchmaking turned off. Um, this is to have a lot more AI characters on screen. And while we do that, run around and see if the SSD is going to struggle providing all that information uh, and assets to the CPU, GPU. So let's go in and start it in three, two, one. Again, running side by side there, I can only see the gamics there at the top right. You guys can see both of them side by side, but I'll see it in the edit. Again, this is created using the in-level assets there as it makes its way along here. So again, there may be differences in terms of texture. There might be differences all the way through just to keep an eye on there. But again, it looks quite similar. I think um, most of the assets are the same. It's not like the previous loading that definitely had things missing. Um, but for now, let's make our way into this game and from here We're just going to get ourselves a lot of AI attention and then run around the surrounding area to kind of push This SSD's ability to supply all of these assets to the remainder of the system So we're not even really going to bother fighting people this time We'll leave it maybe fight with them in a bit But for now the main ambition is just to get as many AI's tailing us as possible so we keep that moving there, keep running around. We're gonna get lots of people to tail us. Again, lots of enemies around here that we can wake up. and Get lots of activity there. Again, we've already got quite a few people tailing us there so we can keep moving forward from there to where these guys are. And as you can see, we've got ourselves quite a lot of attention thus far. So we're gonna be pushing things as much as we can in order to get as many of these enemies tailing us as possible before we bench test this SSD even further. I think that should do for now. So what we can do is start making our way through. We won't go too fast. But for now, as you can see, we've got plenty of activity around us. We're not seeing any slowdown there. We're going to keep moving around the surrounding area as much as we can. And again, lots of activity is the name of the day here. And it's still running beautifully well for us here. We're seeing no you know, asset management problems, not seeing anything that would suggest that the SSD is struggling to stay on top of what we're trying to do here. So for now, let's carry on moving forward. And for now, I think I would call that an absolute success. So for now, let's make our way out of this game and into our third test. This takes advantage of Rocket League. So here we are on Rocket League. So we can go straight into an exhibition mode here. And again, this is all offline. We're going with 4 x four versus 4, the Octagon Ring, it's soccer, and it's on beginner AI mode. So again, we're just going to kick straight into the game now in 3, 2, 1. See so again, in this game, this has got a real high frame rate here. So again, lots of lighting effects and such. Uh, another PS4 title that, although it's been around for a while, has certainly scaled up considerably. It may even have been a PS3 title. But for now, what we're trying to do is just trying to see if any of the stuff we're doing right now is going to force this SSD 
to start bottlenecking in what we're trying to create. But for now, oh, it looks like I'm going to make things real tough for myself there. But again, I'm seeing nothing here that would make me think that this SSD is not up to task. Yes, this isn't the most challenging game. Um, would you believe it? That's practically an own goal. Um, nothing here I'm seeing would make me think that this SSD is not up to task. And this may not be the game in order to uh, display that. But again, this isn't about finding SSDs that don't work. It's about verifying how well the ones that work actually do. And again, we're seeing nothing here to make me think that this SSD isn't perfectly suitable for what we're trying to do. And again, lots of shiny, lots of no drop in frame rate. Everything is running fine there. So let's make our way onto the final game that we're testing, which is of course, The Last of Us Part 2. Okay, so here we are in The Last of Us Part 2. We've got two areas of the game uh, that we're going to be using the chapter select to go to. These are both on Seattle Day 1 and they consist of the tunnels and channel 13. Now the loading for this game is crazy long, so I'm just going to quickly start the loading and then explain why we're using these two modes. So let's go in, we're going to go for the tunnels, moderate difficulty, and we're going to go with start. Let's go in in 3, 2, 1. Now, while this loads, why are we using this area of the game? This is an area where there's a lot of close-knit uh, textures in this area. There's also two or three silent loading segments which force the character to move slowly while the game kind of frees up cached assets uh, in the background for the next area. Now, anyone that's ever played this game will know that even on the PS4 Pro, loading took four ever even in the ps5 it's a real slow game once you're in the game there's plenty of silent loading to not break the immersion but as you can see if you load from a, a cold state like this the loading can be quite slow indeed so this first area of the game we're utilizing as mentioned is because there's lots of close up textures and there's lots and lots of silent loading where if the game and the ssd are going to struggle they will reveal themselves very quickly during this segment. So for now, let's go ahead and carry on making our way forward until we get into uh, the red zone. And we'll keep moving down forward, moving in. And again, that's kind of the first silent loading there, the mask application scene there. The next one's gonna come up shortly. So again, I can just keep moving forward. Again, another silent loading coming up there while it destroys some of those assets, so it keeps everything real tight because none of these assets can afford to be swapped out for low texture ones conveniently uh, if we move forward there's going to be another one shortly and this is going to be one that allows you kind of you're tricked by the cutscene, but really it is another area of the game where it's hiding some of that silent loading there so again that's why we include this segment because it's got three very tightly knit silent loading sections back to back we're not going to play this area for much further because this next whole segment here is obviously a combat section and we're not really focusing too much on that what we're looking at is mainly just a, just a little bit further into this section you know just to double check that none of these assets have had difficulty loading in as we move forward but for now i would say this is pretty much a success and if we keep moving forward while the game is going to uh, get really annoyed while we unfortunately end this guy's life what we're going to do is we're just going to go back to the area select screen and then start making our way to the next area that we're going to choose to go through. The next area, of course, as mentioned, is going to be uh, the uh, channel 13. This area we've selected, let's get it loaded up first and I'll explain why afterwards. So again, we're going to chapters, single day one, channel 13. Let's go in three, let's get it loaded up and ready. Uh, channel 13 uh, we uh, we want to save manually no we don't care about any of that so again let's get it ready in three two one oh no it's going to ask us again three two one so as you can see there as we go through a lot of these steps um the every time we try these games out every situation we try to keep it as similar as possible against the internal ps5 ssd and that of the custom one like this one we're using today the xpg and often we get thrown a curveball i could have edited that out but i didn't want an uncomfortable break there in the edit uh, that would make it look like we've tried a few times 
Uh, now, the reason we use the Channel 13 area is this is a far more open area. There's only a couple of silent loading segments in this part of the game, but also during this area, there's a lot more assets on screen. So the game is, once again, going to have difficulty getting those uh, those uh, graphical assets given to it by the SSD. An area like this, they will become very, very apparent very quickly because there's just too much on screen for it to try to hide that without it being a glaring inconsistency. The previous area, we focused a lot on those textures more so than anything, no frame rates, but this is an area where a drop in frame rates or a drop in actual visual assets being introduced in things like draw distance and more would become very, very apparent. And a lot of the ways in which games like this hide that stuff is that it, um, it swaps out low te uh, quality textures with high quality textures as you get closer. This is an area where a lot of that is going to be happening there in the background. Now loading for this segment, as you've already seen, is gonna be slower than that of the internal PS5 uh, of the previous section that we loaded, but how it compares to the internal SSD, I won't know until post-production, but no doubt you guys have already seen that. I'm already in the game, I'm gonna running through here. It feels like it loaded pretty much. Uh, the way I'm used to, maybe, if it is anything, maybe a pinch slower. But if it is a pinch slower, it really is the tiniest amount. But what I'm doing here is, as quickly as possible, getting up to this area. As you can see, the game does a real great job of fixing the cameras. You can't move out very far. It's definitely doing a lot of that swapping out that I've mentioned there. Again, still don't know why I always shoot this screen, but I'm still going to keep doing it. Um, you're not my therapist. Um, but... As we make our way through the game, the game is clearly introducing a lot of these um, assets in the background so it can free up a lot of those resources in the middle of this game. Here's another silent loading segment. As we jump through, the game then forces you into a slow walk. And that slow walk, again, is being utilized to swap a lot of those assets out in the background and hide a lot of that activity in the background. But again, we're not gonna give it too much time to breathe. We're gonna keep pushing forward as quickly as we can in order to make sure this game is always on its toes and if the SSD is going to show signs of struggle that it will show itself here but for now I'm not seeing any problems whatsoever we're loading in nice and fast again we're on a higher section of where we were earlier and for the most part this is seemingly running very well indeed but for now we can go ahead and we can uh, just look it's all running fine I think we can come out of this game because I'm seeing nothing here. The lighting effects are still great. The game is still running as well as I would like it to. So let's summarize what we've seen today. Well, ultimately, in our this is, I believe, our sixth test of this SSD. It's still holding strong. And again, it is featured in a few comparisons. We've got another big comparison with this going against the WD Black coming soon. And of course, the Adlink A95. So do stay tuned for that. But otherwise, Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, um, do let me know in the comments. Again, I'm always going to recommend this SSD. I found the A-Data, and particularly InnoGrip Control SSDs, uh, to be some of the best value yet high-performing SSDs out there. So if you are looking to upgrade your SSD, on the uh, upgrade the storage on your PS5 right now, there is nothing stopping you going for this. It's just kicked, it's ticked every box for me. Do stay tuned for when we do the comparison against the Blade version, which is a better fit for the PS5 slot. It has to be said, and we'll be running both tests on that independently and comparing its performance against this of the chunkier, kind of slightly protruding uh, heatsink of the S70. I'll see you next time. Cheerio.